Whoa, check out the crime lab. It's all thorough and complicated. You've got ideas, theories. I like that in a sidekick. Sidekick? Who's saying anything about sidekick? Hi, Fiona. Congratulations on winning the 11 Second Club this month. You did a great job. Uh, my name is Jay Jackson. I've been an animator for almost 40 years. Uh, I've worked at Disney on films like Little Mermaid and Tarzan, uh, DreamWorks on Kung Fu Panda. Uh, I've worked at Sony, Rhythm and Hues. Uh, I've worked on The Simpsons movie. And currently I'm working at Universal Studios uh, as a sketch viz artist on The Voyage of Dr. Doolittle. So let's take a look at your shot here. Whoa, check out the crime lab. It's all thorough and complicated. You've got ideas, theories. I like that in a sidekick. Sidekick? Who's saying anything about sidekick? Whoa. Okay, so it looks like you have a pretty good understanding of the 12 principles of animation. And I think your, your acting choices are good for the most part. I think that the, the everything could use a little polish. I'll give you some suggestions there, but you, I think you're definitely on the right track. Um, I think the biggest note that I have is about staging and about the cut from shot one to shot two. Um, you have to keep in mind that most people are only going to see an, your animated scene once. You know, if you're watching a movie or a short, it's going to go by and, you know, obviously if somebody has a DVD, they could play it over and over, but most of your audience is only going to see something once. So you want to make sure that everything reads as clearly as possible that first time. And I try to always remember my first impression from the, the first time I looked at something. And I felt... Um, a little bit of confusion when you cut to shot two. A lot of it has to do with all the stuff. <laughs> I feel like it's more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, I don't quite understand what this is, uh, what this sort of stage-like area that you've created. And I don't understand what all these little black shapes are. I Not that I have to understand what everything is, but there's a lot of it there, and it, it it took my attention away for a minute, thinking, what is all that stuff? And when that's happening, I'm missing some of the acting. So um, my first suggestion would be to simplify shot two. And my eye does go to the, the bug character because he moves, and... So that's good. Um, you can attract the eye of your audience by either having something move, you know, more than everything else is moving, or also by your lighting. So your eye tends to go to the area with the most contrast. To me, this area has the most contrast and it's bright. You know, you've got bright green and you've got bright highlights and stuff. So if I were going to keep that in there, I would probably tone that down a little and try to make sure that this is the brightest and most contrasty thing. And while we're at it, I would just get rid of these shapes um, because uh, you start out, when you cut to the scene, he's, you know, he's partially hidden there. And I don't, I don't think that's a very good first pose. And it, plus the way he's posed, it's, it's very confusing. I, you know, it's hard to tell what he is. Uh, we can tell pretty quickly once he jumps back, but I think it's always good to have your first pose be strong and clear. So I would work on that. And while we're talking about staging... Um, sidekick? Who's saying anything about sidekick? I don't understand why you put in that camera shake. To me, it's distracting, and I can't figure out why it's there. Who's saying about sidekick? I don't think that the bug caused that. And it almost seems like it's something that happens externally or like an earthquake or something, but there's no explanation for it. So if I were you, I would just take that out. I, I do want to talk a little bit more about staging in terms of the cut. If you watch the eye direction of the koala in shot one, he 
His eyes are moving around a lot. And let, let's just play this part. Whoa, check out the crime lab. It's all thorough and complicated. Okay, so all that makes sense to me. He's looking around the crime lab as he walks in, and I think that's fine. And now he kind of turns his gaze sort of down and to the right. And I had the impression that now he's talking to someone. Whoever he's talking to, I'm now thinking that they're probably, uh, well, somewhere uh, over here, just off screen on the right side. Um, and I think especially because he comes down like this, he's because he's coming down, um, I'm thinking that he's coming down to talk to somebody. And of course, I know that's now a bug. And that would make sense to me to have the bug be down here. Um, now, the bug could be off stage, or you could actually just show a little bit of the back of the bug's head if you wanted to. But if we keep going with the scene, you've got ideas here. He's looking around still, I like and then he ends up looking straight at camera. But he didn't look at straight at camera until the very last part. And, well, let's see, I guess for maybe around there, around frame 160 or so, he looks at camera. Um, but generally, I don't think, uh, I don't recommend looking straight at camera. I know it, it can be done, and it has been done in, in movies before, but um, I think it generally looks better if the character is looking slightly to one side. So uh, if I were going to do this, I would recommend that you keep this head angle for the most part. And like I said, keep him looking down that way. And then I would also try to keep him, right now he's slightly to the left of center, I guess. Um, well, he changes. But anyway, it would, to me, the, the best staging would be to have him slightly left of center, looking down. And then when you cut to the next shot of the bug, I would think the bug would, it would look good to have your stage like this and to have the bug on the lower right. So, you know, when you have two characters, if the koala is on the left, you keep the bug on the right or vice versa. So right now you've got the bug on the left. So, I mean, another option would have been to end up with the koala looking down to the left. So either way would work. And I think either of those options would be better than the, than the way it is currently. The other thing is I would, I think you could get a more interesting first pose. I generally recommend that you not just start with the character's arms just hanging at their side. Um, it seems just kind of uh, like a generic pose. You know, everything is kind of straight up and down. It doesn't have a lot of energy or it doesn't spark my interest as much as it could. And he is he's coming in and he's saying, Whoa, check it out. He's saying, Whoa, check it out. And I think, you know, this... The gesture, you know, going like that works pretty well, but I would just start something sooner. So, like, maybe his arms are already up a little, or maybe one arm is up like this. Or, and I don't know what I would do with the other arm. I'd have to put a little bit of thought into it, but I'd give it a little bit more energy than just having it hanging there. Um, another option would be the koala could have his hand on his mouth or his chin, I mean, like that, like, uh, this would be more the other way, but anyway, he could be like, whoa, 
it would give him a more interesting starting point, I think. And I'd probably have him also have a little more lean to him. So he's not just straight up and down. Another little thing, uh, it's maybe a lighting issue, but because you've got his hands dark and you have a dark background, I'm not seeing the hands as much as I'd like to. So if I were going to, uh, I would either experiment with the lighting or else change the color of his dark palms so that they're a little bit lighter and they show up better. I feel like, uh, you know, in an acting shot like this, we look at the face and we look at the hands. Those are kind of the, the key things I tend to focus on anyway. Check out the crime lab. It's and I, I like your, your general body attitudes. I like the fact that you got get the whole body involved in this pose. That's really nice. Um, there is something in here that feels like a mistake, right? It's, let's see. Check out the crime lab. It's all thorough and complicated. You've got to oh, it's right there. Uh, he, he's in a nice moving hold right here, and then he sort of quickly moves to the right and then back to the, the left again as he comes forward. So I found this part really jarring from... Uh, let's say 128 to 138 or so. So I think that just needs some smoothing out or reposing or whatever. So the crime lab, it's all... I find his ears a little distracting. I think it's good that you have some movement on them, but I would consider toning it down or being really careful about where they move. Check out the crime... Like, it, it doesn't seem it doesn't seem necessary for me right there to have his ears go back that much. I almost feel like they're flapping or something, and then to come forward again. Um, in general, I think your lip sync is on the right track. Complicated. You've got ideas, theories. I like that in a psychic. Psychic. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about shot two. I've already mentioned that I would simplify the staging. I would also, well, for now, let's just pretend like th we're going to keep this, uh, this camera angle. I would at least start with the character's head up a little bit higher. And... Um, I would have him nice, I would have him in the clear. I wouldn't have anything in front of him like this cartridge or whatever that is. But I like the way he, he does an anticipation and then jumps back. I do have a little alternative idea for you. Uh, I, I noticed that you have him throw the paper up in the air right there. And I assume you did that because of the sound effect, right? I can't, who's saying anything about sidekick? Like you hear no. the sound of papers rustling. It seems a little bit random to me because he jumps back and lands on the paper. He never looks at the paper. He just sort of tosses it away. I just was thinking that it might be interesting if you were to start the scene. Let's go to white here. With him... Uh, holding a paper... And maybe he's actually looking at that paper. So it would be kind of like he's like this. And then he could go uh, sidekick. Sidekick? Who, who mentioned anything about a sidekick? And then he throws the paper. It seems like that might be a little more, it seems a little more logical to me. I don't know. It's, a, it's just an alternative idea. Yeah, and it is kind of a lot of movement there right at the beginning of the scene. So I don't know if you need such a big move there. Generally, when you cut to a new shot, the first eight frames or so um, 
the audience is taking in a lot of things. They're trying to figure out what's what's the setting, who am I looking at, who is this character. There's a lot of things to think about. And if you throw in a really fast movement right there, it it just becomes a little bit confusing or too much to take in at once, you know? So I would consider simplifying that. You could still have him pull back like, he, you know, he's reacting to this thing about sidekick. So if he were holding that paper, he could be like, sidekick? Who mentioned anything about sidekick? So you get that same type of acting without the big jump back. Sidekick? Who's saying anything about sidekick? And just in terms of um, his lip sync, I feel like he's not really saying sidekick. And another thing to think about is if your character is moving around a lot, I generally exaggerate the mouse shapes a little bit more because they get lost in the, the movement of the whole character. So, um, and what I'm talking about is opening the mouth wider for the vowels, side kick, you know. Uh, is that, let's see, is that how it ends? Let's see. Anything about side kick. Yeah. Anything about sidekick, I would just exaggerate definitely side and by really opening the jaw much wider and kick as well. Yeah, and then if I were to polish that bug character, I would also add in some blinks and some more movement in the eyes, more change of shape. You know, sidekick, you know, have the brows, you know, going up and down. I guess he doesn't really have brows, but I would be a little bit more extreme with his the shapes of his eyes. I think that would make it stronger. Oh, I think the one thing I forgot to mention was the tie. This is just goes in the category of polish. I feel like his tie is kind of stuck to his chest a bit. Whoa, check out the crime lab. It's all thorough. And it's it's changing, you know, it's going side to side and things, which is good, but it doesn't feel like it's really hanging. Um, and then this seems kind of odd to me that it, it goes there and makes that sharp turn. I would think it would just be more, you know, more of a gentle, gentle curve or anyway, I don't want to get into a lot of detail about that, but um, I do think that having a more natural swinging movement on the tie and have it swing away from his body and come back. I do think that would help um, with just sort of the fluidity of your animation. Um, and then there's one other thing I forgot to mention too about staging. It's right here in the beginning is I'm watching the character here. And when this thing back here moves in, my eye went to that. And so I found that a bit distracting. I think it's kind of interesting. And I know you're trying to get, make it look like there's things happening in the crime lab. I think uh, my suggestion would be that if you wanted to have stuff moving, it would make sense to me to have things moving on these screens. You know, just even if it were just like shaking or staticky or some kind of just little simple movement of shape on the screen. Um, that would be another option. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I hope that helps. Uh, I wish you good luck with your animation and I think you're, um, you're doing well and you're on the right track. So good luck with it.